right now, as we sit here, as, as I stand here, 5,000 desperate human beings, 5,000 desperate human beings are huddled under the Del Rio Bridge on the Texas-Mexico border, crowded, hot, dusty, thirsty, hungry, afraid, far from home. Over 80% of these people are from Haiti, having, having journeyed there to Texas, to Mexico, over many weeks after an earthquake devastated their home, their already frail infrastructure, and the presidential assassination left them without leadership. Many thousands, thankfully, have been allowed into our country seeking asylum, and thousands of others have been turned away. Like the tens of thousands of Afghans, we've all been watching over these last few weeks, many of whom, in fact, have a legal right to a visa because of their service to our country. These poor souls face such dire straits at home that they would risk everything. They would leave behind their community, their friends, their family, their entire way of life. According to the UN, right now there are 30 million, over 30 million refugees and asylum seekers around the world. 30 million. And over 80 million have been forcibly displaced from their homes. That is a staggering number. These people are facing violence. They're fleeing famine, war, extreme poverty, even genocide. And each one of those people, as Rick just mentioned, is made B'Tselem Elohim, has a spark of God inside of them. Each one, as the Talmud teaches, is an entire world. And for one reason or another, they can no longer stay home if they want to stay alive. And of course, us, we, as Jews, know more than a little something about this. In the past century and a half, nearly every Jewish community in the world was uprooted or expelled from the pogroms to Euro in Europe and eventually the Shoah, the Holocaust, to the Jews from Arab lands that were expelled in the 40s and 50s, to the Soviet Jews who spent decades trying to escape the Iron Curtain. As Jews, as Americans, unless we have Native American heritage, every single one of us, every single one of us is here tonight because we or our ancestors left an inhospitable place in search of a better life or a safe haven. So no matter your perspective on immigration policy, and I just want to say, of course, there are valid reasons. There are valid reasons for any nation state to want to either limit or to increase immigration. No matter which policy you favor, though, as Jews, as Jews, when we see the face of a boy or a girl, a parent or a grandparent, who's fleeing their home with nothing at all except for the clothes on their back, we see not a stranger. We see ourselves. This holiday that we're celebrating this week, this holiday of Sukkot, we build and we dwell in temporary booths, which are meant to recall our people's, our people's first brush with being a refugee. The Torah teaches in Leviticus 23 that we observe Sukkot to remember the booths, the Sukkot, the sukkahs, that the Israelites dwelt in when they were refugees, fleeing oppression and slavery in Egypt en route to their new home in Eretz Israel. Our sukkah, like the one that's out there, is open on all sides, evoking the tent of Avram, of Abraham and Sarah, who are known for welcoming the stranger, the weary, the needy, into their home. The sukkah is open to remind us of the most oft-repeated mitzvah in the whole Torah, it's, it's repeated many more times in the laws of kashrut or other ritual mitzvot or even uh, the, the mitzvah to come to temple. 
What is that most often repeated mitzvah, the most important mitzvah in the whole Torah? Repeated at least 36 times. To care for the stranger. Do not oppress the stranger. Act justly towards the stranger. Because we were once strangers in the land of Egypt. And yet Sukkot is not merely about caring for the stranger. In fact, you may have never heard a Sukkot sermon about that. And that's because the primary lesson of Sukkot is not just about caring for the stranger. What is our central message of this holiday? Why do we build and live in these temporary fragile structures, which wind could blow over, which gets soaked even in a mild rain? In his book, This is Real and You Are Completely Unprepared, Rabbi Alan Liu shares the following vision of what it means to dwell in the sukkah. He writes, So now we sit flush with the world in a house that calls attention to the fact that it gives us no shelter. It is not really a house. It is the interrupted idea of a house, a parody of a house. And it, it according to Rabbi Liu, exposes the idea of a house, of any house at all, as an illusion. The idea of a house, he says, is that it gives us security, shelter, haven from the storm. But he says, no house can really offer us this. No building of wood and stone can ever afford us protection from the disorder that is always lurking all around us. No shell that we put in between us and the world can ever really keep us secure from it. Harvard theologian Harvey Cox adds that most of us urban dwellers live far away, either actually or metaphorically, from the sukkah. But cancer, plane crashes, and even the inevitable onset of senility remind us as human beings that we are frail and highly vulnerable. And we know that even within a gated community and with the best health insurance and retirement plans, disaster can strike at any moment. Rabbi Amy Eilberg, she summarizes all of these ideas and says, in truth, we are always in the sukkah, not just during sukkah, but always in the sukkah. We are always more vulnerable than we realize and always exposed to dangers both natural and human. So the key spiritual message of Sukkot is that just like the sukkah, our situations are seemingly sturdy and stable lives, are fragile. Things can change in an instant. As we all know, Jews throughout history have always known this truth. And COVID has, of course, reminded us of it. The refugees at our doorstep, though, never had the luxury of forgetting. Most often, our tradition teaches that in response to recognizing our own vulnerability, that on this holiday of Sukkot, which reminds us that we, like the Sukkah, are vulnerable, what is our response? It should be joy. We should insist on finding joy and meaning in this fragile and beautiful and ephemeral life that we all share. And of course, of course we should. Of course we should find the joy. That is why Rick Recht is here. That is why tonight is such a special night and this is such a special week. But at the same time, as we recognize our own vulnerability, we as Jews must all the more so remember our responsibility to care for literally, literally the most vulnerable, vulnerable people in the world. Sukkot reminds us that they, that they could be us. Our history as Jews reminds us that they were us. And the Torah reminds us, it insists, that they are us. If you follow the news like, like I do, like, I can't, like unfortunately, uh, unlike Rick, I can't look away. 
if you follow the news stories of all of those people still trying to get out of Afghanistan, or the asylum seekers on our southern border, if you follow their stories of the people who have exhausted all of their other options, you'll hear many of them say that all they can do now is pray. What might those prayers accomplish? What can prayer do for a stranded or a lost soul? In Rabbi Heschel, who I mentioned earlier, in his words, prayer brings down the walls which we have erected between man and man, between man and God. A wall stands between man and God, and at the wall, he says, we must pray, searching for a cleft, for a crevice, through which our words can enter and reach God behind that wall. Well, my friends, on this holiday, on Sukkot, we have no walls. Our sukkahs are open on all sides. So may we learn this Sukkot, may Sukkot teach us to tear down the other walls we have erected, as, as Rabbi Heschel says, the walls between man and man. When we truly see the other, the stranger, each one of them made B'Tselem Elohim in the image of God, when we welcome them into our country, or at the very least into our hearts, we make a little more space for God and we bring a little more holiness into this world. Moadim Lasimcha, I wish all of you a joyous Sukkot. Shabbat Shalom.